everyone and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we're taking a look at Deluxe Class Soundwave from the Transformers Studio Series. He's number 51 and this is his appearance from Transformers Dark of the Moon. Some nice artwork here on the side. Kind of a close-up of the head and chest there on that side and then kind of a more of a full body shot over here. I always like this version of Soundwave. Uh, in the second movie, he was that kind of weird satellite thing, and I don't know, I just didn't think that worked. They are doing a figure for the satellites coming out later this year, but I always thought making him a car was a better idea. I mean, ideally, he would be some kind of stereo or something, but I understand that doesn't really make sense anymore. But in any case, pretty cool. Packaging's pretty standard. I don't know why the Decepticons all still have the Autobot symbol, but, like, the Constructicons can get their own symbol. I don't get it. In any case, that's going to do it for the box. Let's go ahead and get him out of there, and we'll take a closer look. All right, so here is Soundwave with the little backdrop that he comes with. Now, I'll be honest, it's been a minute since I've seen Dark of the Moon. I think this scene is from when Megatron was, like, out there hiding as one of those oil tanker trucks, and they had to, like, go find him. But I don't remember if Soundwave actually went along on that. I kind of just remember him, like, being back with the humans, like, at that office building. I don't know, like I said, it's been a minute. But anyway, this is the backdrop that he comes with. So here he is on the little stage that they pack in with all these Studio Series figures. It's not bad. I think he looks alright. So here's a closer look at Soundwave. I think he looks pretty great. I love that he comes with the little laser beak. The laser beak doesn't transform in any way. It's just kind of like a little accessory. But it can clip on to either of the forearms. It has a little perch on each of the forearms so it can clip right on there. I think that's really cool. Uh, just taking a quick look at laser beak and then we'll kind of put him off to the side but he's got some decent molding he does have his red eyes painted which looks pretty cool the only movement he has is just like a little hinge right here in his waist i think just so you can kind of have him you know perched at different angles but also later uh, it's going to come in that you can turn it so that you can peg this little peg right here into the car mode we'll see that a little bit later on but yeah overall i think he's decent He's not really a Transformer, he's just kind of a fun little accessory for Soundwave, so he does not transform in any way. But I'm going to put him off to the side, and then we'll take a closer look at Soundwave. I actually really like him. <laughs> I like this guy a lot. I like his kind of short squat demeanor. He does have, you know, some roof of the car backpack kibble, which is kind of fairly par for the course for some of these movie figures. I feel like we get this a lot, uh, but it's okay. It's not super in the way. I like the head sculpt a lot. I'm going to try to move this up so we can get in closer. I like the like angry face. I like the gray plastic with the black. The red eyes all looks really sharp. I like the kind of Batman uh, spikes on his head. <laughs> the bat ears, as you would. You can see the Mercedes symbol there in the chest. A lot of nice detailing there. Uh, articulation wise the head can move from side to side a little bit of back and forth mostly back as you can see which helps with the transformation but side to side no problem there is a ball joint there you have a swivel here in the shoulder then underneath that you have another joint for out to the side this piece can move up and down a little bit so if you want to get like all the way out to the side arm movement or something like that for laser beak you can do that he has a bicep swivel he's got 90 degrees in the elbow uh, wrists don't move because they fold into the forearm don't think there's anything in the waist either he does have a ball joint in the hip though so out to the front no problem to the side you get a little bit of a uh, hindrance there because of these like spikes on the hips so you can't do too much out to the side but you can definitely go forward uh, you can go back as much as the backpack will allow you have a knee bend 90 degrees and then the rest of the foot is pretty solid so he can stand and pose quite well uh, he doesn't really have heels like dedicated heels but the foot is made in such a way that it's pretty hefty in the back so he doesn't really have trouble standing but yeah i like him he's he like i said he's a little short and squat he's definitely i don't think like a like a major warrior but he's certainly awesome for like espionage and intelligence and things like that so very very cool I like his design quite a bit. I thought I would hate these wheels on the top, but I actually kind of like them a lot. They're neat. They're neat, like, style choice. I just think it works. So, I think he looks really cool, but let's go ahead. We'll check out that transformation. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is uh, you're going to fold up these feet, but I want to show you this because the directions don't tell you this. There's actually a peg right there. 
which like loosely tabs in right there, as you can see. So when you need to rotate these up, make sure you untab it. You have to kind of pull that away. The directions tell you just to swing up the feet and you don't want to break anything. There is a tab there, just be aware of that. And then you're going to swing the rest of this up. It's going to kind of click back into place and you'll hear it kind of click like that. So really you could probably just do the whole thing. You don't have to do it as two separate steps. Well, now, now I'm thinking I should probably, but anyway. You'll spin that around, you kind of hear it click, and then you're going to peg these into each other very simply like that. Make sure that's all pegged in. And then you'll see that's the back of the car. So that's going to kind of sit there for a sec. You're going to lift this up, flip out the whole roof of the car, <laughs> back windshield and everything. Um, you're going to disconnect this darker gray waist piece from the torso. So you just kind of pull that out. You can see that it just has these two little like friction clips that clip underneath there. So you just kind of pull that out. Now you have to bring this up and this has to come in at the right angle because it's going to be very important for later on. You want to make sure that this is pushed back. You can see how it's like double joints. You can see how there's a, a hinge there and a hinge there. You want to make sure that that's pushed back as far as it can. And then you'll see how it kind of lines up with the back here. So push that all back. You'll see that the thighs kind of really perfectly contour to the windshield and roof of the car. It's really nice. And then just make sure that's pushed in as much as possible. Because if this is too low, it's going to get in the way of the arms later. I had difficulty with that the first time I was transforming it. So I had to make sure all the subsequent times that that's pushed all the way in. Um... So the next part is actually pretty cool in my opinion. You're going to flip this down. You're going to fold the hand into the forearm like so. You're going to kind of rotate this around so that this lines up. Then you're going to rotate this so that lines up. And you can see that's the whole side of the car right there. So you're going to do that again over here. You're going to open this up. Fold in the hand. Rotate this around. That's going to line up there. This is all going to line up here. And there you go, you got the two full sides of the car. Then the whole thing is just going to hinge down and just fill in the side of the car. And like I said, if this waist piece isn't pushed in enough, it'll hang down farther here and then the, the forearms will kind of butt into it and then it won't close up right. So you want to make sure that that's all in place and then all the panels will kind of click into place and line up. And then you can see that that's pretty much the whole car right there. Next, you're just going to take these pieces, spin them around. Now, they may pop off the ball joint, and if they do, it's really not that big a deal. You can see that there's a ball joint right in there. So if it would pop off of that, it's not a big deal. But you're just going to have to rotate these little pieces around. It's a little bit easier said than done. See, like I said, it's probably just going to pop off. Anyway, you just line it up, and then you pop it back on. And then you'll see how it kind of flushes out the front of the car. So it's a little difficult because there's just, it's really, the clearance is really tight. But if you can get it around, hey, I got one without popping the ball joint. Well, if you can rotate it around, you just pop it up into place. Then you're going to push the head back this whole panel. If you want to push it from underneath, you can. You can push under here. This whole head will rotate back. And again, just watch the clearances, but that's going to rotate around. And then the whole hood of the car will just kind of pop up and snap into place. Just like so. Make sure everything's lined up. Then you can just kind of make a pass, make sure all the panels are clicked into place. But there you go, there is your Mercedes. And I gotta say, I think this is a really sharp looking car. I think it looks good. And it's pretty solid, it really holds together well. You really don't see too much uh, robot kibble. Yeah, you see the head, but it's not really that big a deal. Rolls very well. It's pretty solid, I really like it a lot. And then like I said, there's a peg spot right here. You can take a uh, laser beak rotate that around and then you just line that peg up 
and then he can peg on top if you want. I think that looks kind of silly, but if you want to do it, it is an option. You do have. Yeah, it's pretty sharp. I just think it's nice how compact it is, how everything really folds up and, and holds together nicely. A lot of times I find with these movie figures, not, well, I shouldn't say a lot of times, but sometimes, you know, when you're trying to close everything up and get the panels to line up, you know, you'll have one panel that constantly wants to pop out. And it could be me like mistransforming something, but this one, just everything, once you get that waist piece uh, here situated, everything just lines up perfectly, sinks in. You can see the back is a little bit popping out, but it's really minor. For the most part, this really holds together pretty solidly. I really like it a lot. I think it looks sharp. All right, so I absolutely recommend Soundwave 100%. I like him a lot. I think the robot mode's great. I think the vehicle mode is great. I love the little laser beak that he comes with. Um, in the movies, he didn't really have, like, storage, like, cassettes the way the G1 Soundwave does. So it kind of makes sense to me that laser beak doesn't really transform. He's just kind of a fun accessory. And I love the fact that they put those little perches on the two forearms so that he can do kind of the classic, like, perch on his forearm you know, pose that I think Soundwave is kind of known for with Laserbeak at this point. A lot of Soundwave toys do that now. So I love that they included that. Um, I don't really have much to complain about this guy. The transformation is kind of fun and intuitive. You know, you do it once, you pretty much have it down pat. Uh, it's not really a pain or anything like that. He's fun to transform. Like I said, love both modes. Uh, he's easily the best out of this wave. I mean, considering his deluxe wave mates are the three terrible motorcycles. <laughs> and the uh, World War II hot rod, which is basically just a repaint slash retool of an existing mold. Uh, this guy's new, original, and I think they pulled it off great. They are doing a satellite sound wave later on, I think in the next wave or two, so if that's your bag, uh, you can definitely hold out for him. Uh, but I definitely think this guy's worth adding to your collection because I really like... I knew I would like him, but I like him even more than I thought. I'm kind of blown away by him. So, uh, yeah, I say definitely pick him up if you can find him. Uh, but that'll do it for this one, so please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks so much for watching.